In this video, I will talk about insulin levels. I will talk about the different tests you can do to test your insulin levels. I will discuss what is a normal insulin level versus insulin resistance and how to interpret your insulin test results. I will also share two studies. One of them looked at how insulin levels change throughout the day, and the other one looked at how different diets affect insulin levels. Make sure you watch this video until the end so that you would get a bigger picture of what is a normal insulin level and how to keep your insulin low. And if you're new to my YouTube channel, my name is Greta and I'm an online nutritionist and a holistic health coach. If you haven't yet, consider subscribing to my YouTube channel for weekly health-related videos. So first, what is insulin? Insulin is a hormone responsible for regulating blood sugars. Each time you eat, you elevate your insulin. The more times you eat or snack something, the more insulin you will have in your system. And depending on what you eat, you will elevate your insulin to a different degree. As a general rule, carbohydrates elevate blood glucose and insulin the most, and fats elevate blood glucose and insulin the least. Why? because carbohydrates are broken down into sugar in our bodies. In normal conditions, when you are insulin sensitive, the amount of glucose and the amount of insulin would be perfectly balanced. Let's say you eat a sandwich. It would get broken down into glucose. The glucose would gradually get released into the bloodstream. Your glucose would go from, let's say, 100 mg per deciliter to 140 mg per deciliter. And your body would release just enough insulin to take that glucose from the bloodstream and bring it to the cells to be used as energy and store the rest as glycogen and body fat that can later be used as energy. This insulin would bring your blood glucose down to 100 relatively quickly. And in this situation, your body doesn't have to work hard to maintain normal blood glucose levels. Your glucose and insulin would be in the normal range. Or another case, you could eat the same sandwich and your glucose would go from 100 to 140 milligrams per deciliter and your body would release some insulin to bring glucose to the cells, but the cells wouldn't be receptive to insulin. Your body would release more insulin, in some cases five to seven times more insulin, and that would finally be enough to bring your glucose levels to normal. This would stay unnoticed for years, until you have type 2 diabetes. Because your doctor might check your glucose and your glucose is normal. This is insulin resistance. In this situation, your body would have to work really hard to keep your glucose in normal ranges. And that itself is a serious issue, as high insulin levels are harmful. Or another example. This is a type 2 diabetes example. You eat a sandwich. Your blood glucose goes from 100 to 180 mg per deciliter. Your body releases a lot of insulin, but you are so insulin resistant that your body doesn't manage to bring that glucose down for a long time. You have elevated glucose and insulin, both causing damage to your body. At some point, your body might burn out and not be able to produce these high levels of insulin to deal with these high levels of glucose, and you might need to start insulin injections. Does it answer the problem that started with having too much glucose and insulin in the first place? Not really. Your body is refusing glucose for a reason, and it should not be forced to take glucose. Having too much insulin over time results in insulin resistance. Insulin resistance is a state where cells in your body refuse to let glucose in to be used as fuel. The amount of sugar or glucose in your blood should always be around 100 mg per deciliter. It is equivalent to around 1 teaspoon of glucose in your blood. 1 teaspoon in around 5 liters of blood. Now, if you look at what we consider a regular diet, some of the foods that most of us eat several times a day, you will see that teaspoons of sugar add up quickly. This picture shows how does each food affect blood glucose compared with one 4 gram teaspoon of sugar. A serving of white rice is equivalent to 10.1 teaspoons of sugar. A serving of pasta, 6.6 .6 teaspoons of sugar. One banana, 5.7 teaspoons of sugar. 
As you can imagine, all of these foods greatly exceed the requirement of having only one teaspoon of glucose in our blood at a time, especially in cases where you are also insulin resistant, meaning your body is refusing glucose fuel. Now, you might eat some food and not be able to effectively use energy from this food. It still has to go somewhere. It would end up being converted into body fat and stored in your fat tissue. That is another function of insulin. It takes glucose, turns it into fat, and stores it in your fat tissue. It's a fat storage hormone. Insulin resistance means that your body has a very hard time trying to keep your blood glucose normal. It is a very unhealthy state, as having insulin resistance will result in chronically elevated insulin. And chronically elevated insulin is involved in type 2 diabetes, obesity, heart disease, cancer, and dementia. You should try to keep your insulin at normal ranges to prevent these health conditions. How do you test your insulin levels? You can either test your fasting insulin levels, your C-peptide levels, or your HOMA IR. The first one, insulin blood test, also referred to as fasting insulin test, is a test used to measure the amount of insulin in the body. However, insulin has a very short half-life, meaning that it gets cleared out of the body relatively quickly. It might not show the bigger picture. However, your pancreas is making something called a C-peptide at the same time. And this C-peptide is made in the same quantities as insulin, but it has a longer half-life. So if you want to know if you have high levels of insulin, it is a good idea to check if you have C-peptide that is elevated. And keep in mind that in late, more advanced stages of insulin resistance and type 2 diabetes, you would have low levels of insulin and C-peptide. It indicates that your pancreas is struggling to make enough of insulin. And we have the HOMA-IR test, the hemostatic model assessment for insulin resistance. Your HOMA-IR score is calculated from your fasting glucose and fasting insulin results. So how to interpret your insulin results and how to know if you are insulin resistant or not. That's a normal range. Fasting glucose, 70 to 100 milligrams per deciliter or 3.9 to 5.6 millimolars per liter. A1C, less than 5.7. Fasting insulin, 2 to 5 micro international units per milliliter of blood. Less than 5 is normal. Less than 3 is ideal. You will see in some sources they say that 10 is still fine, but it's actually not. Your HOMA IR score should be between 0.5 to 1.5. And you will see that insulin is measured in micro units per milliliter, micro international units per milliliter, or picomoles per liter. You can convert it using an online converter. That's how you interpret your HOMA IR scores. Healthy range, close to 1, 0.5 to 1.5. Near 1 means that you are insulin sensitive. Then more than 1.5 indicates early insulin resistance. More than 2.9 indicates advanced insulin resistance. A high HOMA IR means that you are insulin resistant. Low HOMA IR means that you have low insulin resistance, meaning that you are insulin sensitive. HOMA IR test measures how hard your body has to work to keep your blood sugars at normal levels. And keep in mind that there are some exceptions. While getting healthier and correcting insulin resistance, you might see a temporary increase in your blood sugar levels. For example, reducing your daily carbohydrate intake and eating less frequently would reduce your insulin levels. And this could lead to decreased insulin resistance and a slight increase in your blood glucose levels. That's because we need insulin to keep glucose low. Over time, both, your glucose and insulin would go lower. So always look at the bigger picture. How to interpret fasting insulin results? Up to five, it's normal. More than five, you're insulin resistant. If your result is 10 or more, you have a high level of insulin resistance. And how to interpret C-peptide test results? The normal range for a C-peptide test is 0.51 to 2.72 nanograms per milliliter. This may also be expressed as 0.17 to 0.90 nanomoles per liter. 
And here's how your insulin levels change throughout the day. This study looked at how two different high carbohydrate diets, high in sugar or high in starch, affected blood glucose and insulin levels throughout the day. In this study, we can see that insulin levels were fluctuating from fasting levels of 50 picomoles per liter, which is 7.2 microinternational units per milliliter, to 300 picomoles per liter, or 43.2 microinternational units per milliliter. Diet rich in sucrose resulted in higher insulin peaks, but starch rich meals were not far behind. And here's another study that looked at how different diets affect insulin. It compared the high carbohydrate diet, low in saturated fat, and the low carbohydrate diet, high in saturated fat. As we can see shown in green, the low carbohydrate, high fat diet resulted in much lower insulin concentrations. Now you should have a way better picture of how insulin works, how to keep it low, and how to interpret your insulin test results. If you are insulin resistant, I have another video you should watch. It's called How to Reverse Insulin Resistance. It should appear on the screen right now. And if you would like to be personally coached by me, I have an online health and weight loss coaching program that can help you to reverse insulin resistance. You can find a link to join in the description of this video. And if you found this video useful, don't forget to like it and subscribe to my YouTube channel. You can also support me on Buy Me A Coffee or Patreon. Thanks so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.